What's going on today? Uh, this is David again. Just coming to make another video. Um, I'm going to title it <clears throat> The Lamp, Light, and Oil. Um, it is imperative that you Israelites, you men and women of Israel, uh, you get this understanding if you're in the faith, you understand what I'm saying, possibly, but I'm going to break it down a little bit more. Um, if you're a new watcher, uh, you're just coming in this true, uh, stick with it. It's going to save your life. It's going to be the only way. It's going to save your life. It's going to keep you from danger because the spirit of Christ is on the earth and he is judging our people. Um, I'm making this video because I'm just seeing Israelites dropping like flies for the most random ways. Okay. Um, yeah, I saw this one brother. He was from an Israelite camp, but he thought his wife was committing adultery. That's a sin, right? Um, and uh, he killed a friend of his, his wife, and two kids, but he left one child because he said the child looked like him. And I knew that was the Lord because we read the Gospel of Philip. It talks about a child from an adulterer how it will look like the adulterer and it, it it goes into that process so when i when the when they when the newscaster spoke that out i was like that's the lord see he said he thought the child looked like him his heavenly father man he thought his wife was committing adultery so he and then you know proverbs 6 talks about you know the vengeance won't be there's no mercy so yeah and two sisters that i just saw getting a drive-by shooting got killed um you know saw this jake getting pressed by the police they told him to drop his gun. He's like hesitating to do it. He doesn't know if they're going to kill him. And you know what I'm saying? But the Lord is just not playing with your evil anymore. He's taking you out. He's blowing your candles out. So if you're an Israelite, you know, repent. Keep that sincere heart. Keep these precepts on mind. Stay diligent. Burn the night oil. Let's get into this, man. Let's, go, uh, let's give all praise to the Most High God, Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. And all praises, you lost sheep of the house of Israel and Gentiles who fear God. Keep this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding because the, 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 it's going to go away from you one, in one of these days. That's right. Let's go to King David. The Lord is not playing games with you. The time of our people uh, accepting righteousness has come, and the acceptance of those who don't is coming to an end. It's basically at its end, <laughs> okay? These people are not going to be in the kingdom, okay? Let's get it. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 29 through 37. I'm not speaking like that, like I'm the Lord, but I'm telling you, these are the signs in this book. You know who's going to make it, who's not, in a sense. You have a good idea until they repent and come back with a sincere heart. For thou art my lamp, O Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai will light my, light my darkness. That's right, because uh, in Enoch, it tells you that Yahweh Shai is who has wisdom, might. He brings that understanding to you, okay? For by thee, I have run through a troop. By my God, have I leaped over a wall. As for Yahweh, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is Yahweh? Save Yahweh Shai. And who is a rock? Save our God. That's right. The Lord God of Israel is Yahweh Shai. Okay. Uh, uh, Yahweh is the ineffable, ineffable one, but Yahweh Shai to the Israelites is considered the Lord God of Israel because he is from the line of Israel and he has the power from Yahweh to create. Let's read. Yahweh is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon high places. He teaches my hands to war. That's right. So that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. That's what's going to happen to you. I was going to make a video about Jacob's trouble today, but I decided to do this first. Then we'll get into Jacob's trouble in the next video. Thou has also given me the shield of thy salvation. And thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not slip. That's right. So you don't fall into trouble. Right? He will lighten your darkness, that light inside. 
Let's go to Psalms chapter 18, verse 28. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Your candle, okay? That understanding that comes from him is what's lighting your candle. So when you read these scriptures, you don't read like the rest of the world. You have a, a different understanding. That's the Lord lighting your understanding of his word. That's the grace, right? You got to keep that candle lit. Psalms ver chapter 119, verses 1 through 8. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. That's right. You seeking it. You want to know more. So you're studying with your whole heart. Let's read. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. That's right. You keep them on your mind. When I'm watching TV, a precept pops up. Oh, that brother, oh mm -hmm, that's in the Gospel of Philip. Oh, mm-hmm. Lord talks about that in uh, the Apocalypse of James. Oh, that's in Enoch. I th all these things happen, I'm watching it. Let's read. Oh, Ezekiel. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just happening. Let's read. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. That's right. I will praise thee with a brightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Righteous judgments. You've learned them. Right? Let's read. I will keep thy statutes. O forsake me not utterly. That's right. That's right. Who are the great men to Yahweh Shai? And Yahweh. Let's read. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 5. This is off topic, but you need to understand this. The people who you think are great in this world are not great to the Lord. They are, they are abominable. They're nothing. And they're going to fall. The book of Jer Jeremiah chapter 5. That's right. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. That's right. You're not seeking the truth? The Lord is saying our people don't seek it. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. That's right. You hear our people. Oh, bless, praise the Lord. But they're about to cook some ham honks, right? Some neck, some, uh, some pig's feet, some hog maws, right? O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? He's only dealing with the truth. He's not dealing with your emotion or what you think. Let's read. Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. That's right. Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish. For they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. That's right. I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. That's right. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Wherefore, a lion out of the forest shall slay them. And a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. That's right. You don't got that, that oil, that light. It's taking you out. So even though you're probably brought down to a low estate, you women and men of Israel, because you serve the Lord, you're great in his eyes. Joy is for you. Everyone else. Turmoil, death. Let's get it. Let's keep going. Psalms 119, verses 105 through 107. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it 
that I will keep thy righteous judgments. That's right. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy word. That's right. The flesh is nothing, it's the spirit that quickeneth. According to thy word. That's right. Psalms 119, verses 129 through 130. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. That's right. It giveth light. So understanding the testimonies, understanding the law, statutes, and commandments, it gives you light. You're, 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 you're gaining understanding to how you should walk now. Okay? So you don't get your candle blew out. Right? Let's read. Yeah, that's why I said that about that that uh, that judgment I saw with that brother, man. Let the will of the Lord be done. Let's read Proverbs six verses twenty three through twenty through thirty five. Excuse me. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee, and when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. That's right. And when thou wakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Let lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with thine eyelids, with her eyelids. For by means of a horish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth, doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. That's right. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Man, please, please don't kill me. He's not going to care. It's the Lord. He's not going to spare. Let's read. The Lord is, it is a series for you. Let's read Proverbs chapter 13, verse 9. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. That's right. So that candle inside you, the Lord's watching. He's seeing, are you someone that's going to serve me? Has he repented? Is he going to? Remember, he, he knows you from the beginning, but he's constantly watching to see in this flesh, in this world, if you make a change. All he wants you to do is repent and serve him. Let's read. That's right. And women are not exempt. A lot of a lot of sisters think they can just hear it and don't have to study the word. You're not exempt. A lot of eaves are falling, disappearing, getting killed. Let's read Proverbs 31. Verses 10 through 18. What does it say in Jeremiah? Get ye to the cunning women. That's right. You sisters got to wake these other sisters up who's out here uh, gold digging, being cunning. Let's read. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband do safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. He don't have to go nowhere. He got everything he need at home. She would do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Willingly. That's right. She's like the merchants, ships. 
she bringeth her food from afar. That's right. You remember back in the day when I remember I was a young man, I lived with my grandmother, right? You know, you walk in the house, you know, they didn't, you know, I think it's old school. But I mean, she believed in God. I mean, she read some of the Bible, but I don't think she kept all the commandments. She didn't. But, you know, you walk in the house, it smells like food. She's cooking, right? That's the order of the Lord. My grandpa will be sitting in his chair reading the paper. You know what I mean? He's happy. There's harmony in the house. You don't get that anymore. Let's read. But that's that's a good uh, that's good work for the Lord. That's the duty of a woman. She rises also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. That's right. Uh, my other grandmother on my mother's side. Every time I was staying at night, my cousins or whatever. You know, she would always be up hacka early, man, even before going to work, getting stuff ready for the kids and stuff. Let's read. She considereth the field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planted the vineyard. She's laboring, you know, doing her own thing, trying to make her own money. Let's read. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle Goeth not out by night. That's right. She's up studying the word. That's right. She's focused. She's diligent. Women are not exempt. It's important you study. Right? Let's read. Let's read. Let's go to Job, the Edomite. Okay? He gives some understanding because he has some understanding. Yeah, this is uh, the Testament of Job. I'm going to break down Job. I'm going to cut a bunch of doctrines up with, the with breaking down Job by himself. The whole Esau, all of them being destroyed, is false doctrine. I'm going to prove it in a video I'm going to do. I'm studying Job again. Uh, I'm putting it together now. Testament of Job, chapter 10, verses 14 through 15. The Elihu, the evil one, shall have no remembrance among the living. His luminary is extinguished. And has lost its light. That's right. There's a specific line within Esau. Let's read. The glory of his lamp will announce itself for him. For he is the son of darkness and not of light. That's right. So all the blasphemy that his line does on the earth, that's announcing who they are. The book of Job chapter 18. Job is actually speaking in the context of warning his own people. He knows what's going to happen to him, but so he's choosing the righteous path, being upright in front of the Lord. Let's read. Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. That's right. They've set a trap for themselves. Esau. So Job is an Edomite, but he's sort of telling the Esau and them what's going to happen. Let's read. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walketh upon a snare. Where'd you get that from? That's Psalms. That's right. The jinn shall take him by the heel, and the robber shall prevail against him. The snare is laid for him in the ground, and a trap for him in the way. That's right. Cherish shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him to his feet. His strength shall be hunger bitten and destruction shall be ready at his side. It shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. That's right. It shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none of his. That's right. Uh, the covenant does not belong to Esau. So Job is telling he's being upright and he's saying it's none of yours, the wicked. Let's read. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. His root shall be dried up beneath and above all his branch be cut off. That's right. They're going to be, uh, they're going to be brought down to nothing, right? Like we were brought down. Esau is going to happen to them. Let's read. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. That's right. You Edomites, your, your whole history is going to be wiped out like ours was. Repent. You got to serve a righteous man of Yahweh Shai. 
and Yahweh. You got to learn this truth from an Israelite. Let's read. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. That's right. They that come after him shall be astonished at his day, and they that went before were affrighted. Surely such are the dwellings of the wicked, and this is the place of him that knoweth not Yahweh. That's right. So a lot of you Edomites out there, Esau, so-called Caucasians, a lot of you don't know the Lord in truth. Your judgment is in the testament of Job. He is your he is your forefather, and he's telling you what's going to happen to you for your pride. I'm going to break a video down with that so you'll understand it more. But Job is an Edomite. It's basically their example of what they need to do. The Lord gives examples in the scriptures, period. Um, let's go to... The, to uh, let's go to Matthew 5. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Christ, what he says about it. So now that you understand the light, what it means to you, you're, I'm going to explain to you what's going on with you now. Matthew 5. Verses 13 through 16, you Israelites, because he's talking to you Israelites in this in this uh, section here. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, that's right, wherewith shall it be salted? That's right. In his eyes, you've lost your savor. Okay, let's read. It is thenceforth good for nothing. You're not good for him anymore. You're not bringing righteousness to the earth. You're only bringing wicked. Your light is going to get blown out. You've lost your savor. Let's read. But to be cast out and to be trodden down under foot of men. That's right. That's why we fall into uh, turmoil. And you die. They, they kill you in public. Let's read. You're the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. That's right. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. If you're in righteousness, you're giving light to the whole world. Let's read. Let your light shine so before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's right. So if you're not sh letting your light shine, being righteous, he's going to blow you He's gonna blow you out. Let me interrupt. Let's go to Ezekiel 5. Ezekiel 5. Lord talks about that in Ezekiel 5. Let's get it. Let's go to Ezekiel 5. Then I'll jump back to the light some more because this is what's happening to you um, right now. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard. Then take thee balances the way and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city. That's right. When the days of the siege are fulfilled. That's right. He's talking about when uh, uh, Rome came and destroyed this prophecy. Let's read. And thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. That's right. And the third part thou shalt scatter in the wind. And I will draw out a sword after them. That's right. So one was on fire. One part was on fire. They're going to they're going to be destroyed. Second part, uh, the knife is going to get them. And then the third part is going to scatter in the winds and he's going to draw the sword after you. So you're the remnant and you get the opportunity to repent and come back to him so that sword doesn't get you. Let's read. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. Then take of them again and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. For there, thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. That's right. So he's, he's saying... Uh, what does he say in Ezra's? Is it Ezra's or Ecclesiastes? Gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So the remnant, you're going to be in adversity scattered everywhere. But he's watching you. Okay, let's read. Thus saith the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I've set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she had changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations. That's right. You don't like the Lord's judgments. You like making up your own and you turn them into wickedness, even amongst your people. So you got some Israelites listening to some of you and they're like, I don't know what that means. I don't like that. They're not studying accordingly. Let's read. 
and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. That's right. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye multiply more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. That's right. So you don't even keep the law of the nation that you're in. The Lord ain't with you being disobedient, period. He put you in captivity. You be obedient. Let's read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I, am against thee and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. That's right. That's right. You get judged in front of everybody. You're the light. Everybody sees you get judged, but it means something. Let's read. And I will do in thee that which I have not done and whereunto I will not do any more the like because of all thine abominations. Therefore, the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things, and with all thine abominations, therefore will I diminish thee, neither shall mine eyes spare, and neither will I have any pity. That's right. Uh, you're the temple, so all your abominations, all the food you eat, all the fornication, adultery, all your iniquity, he's going to not have mercy on you. Just read. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. And a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee, and I will scatter a third part to all the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. So you're going to be in, you're going to be in turmoil wherever we are in the world. Thus shall mine anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted. That's right. He's happy to do it. And they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. His fury. Slavery was fury from the Lord. Think about it. Let's read. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of of all that pass by. That's right. Nobody likes coming to the hood, right? Everybody looks at you with reproach. They're amazed at how bad things are for the so-called blacks and native Indians and Hispanics. They don't want to go to the ghetto, right? They don't want to be around you. They watch your judgments on TV. Oh, God, you see how they shot that black guy? Man, they're all seeing it, but it's for something. Let's read. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt, and instruction, and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee. It's a taunt to them. What's happening to you? It's going to turn on them. Let's read. When I shall execute judgments in thee in anger, and in fury, and in furious rebukes, I, the Lord, have spoken it. That's right. When I shall send upon them the air evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and you will break your staff of bread. So will I send you upon famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. That's right. You don't have this light. He's going to destroy you. That's right. Uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. The ten virgins. You better get this oil. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. That's right. But the wise answered, saying, No, not, not, excuse me. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. 
but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. That's right. When the famine of the word comes, uh, people are going to be out selling this word to you because they're going to be real quiet. That's right. You have to pay to know the truth. Let's read. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. That's right. And the door was shut. going to be cut off. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Very verily, verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know, you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. That's right. Let's get it, man. You better get this understanding. Don't be foolish. The Lord is going, he's, he's taking our people out. That's right. We're in the we're in this generation. Let's go to Zephaniah chapter one. Verses one, excuse me, verses twelve through eighteen. He's searching you out and he's killing our people. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees, that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore, their goods shall become a booty and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. That's right. You're hearing the voice of the day of the Lord from all the prophets. Just read. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarmed against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, for they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither shall their silver or their gold be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. That's right. Your light has been put out because you're not keeping that oil. That's right. The kingdom is for the righteous who, who love their Lord. That's right. So do Job. That's enough. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 62, verses 1 through 7. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness there go, thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. That's right. So he's going to gradually keep pick, picking up his judgment in this word. Are people going to gradually keep uh, rising up in righteousness? These judgments, all that's included. Until you understand that these judgments are happening to you, this light is, is not going to shine forth. So brothers like myself are going to bring it out to you. Let's read. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. That's right. And all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. That shall also be a crown of glory in thine hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hezbollah, and thy land Bulah. For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as thy bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. Rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. That's right. Watchmen, we're going to keep bringing this truth out. All his words are being fulfilled. Keep that oil. Don't let the Lord put you out. I hope this is edifying. Um, all praises to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and you Gentiles who fear God. 
and all praises the Most High God, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, the King of Israel. Shalom.